Hey there! Happy Diwali, India! For those of you who don't know, Diwali is an ancient Hindu festival celebrated in autumn every year. The festival signifies the victory of light over darkness, good over evil, and hope over despair. Indians celebrate the festival by lighting up lamps and letting firecrackers off at night. But do you know how firecrackers work? To understand this, we need to look into pyrotechnics, which is the science of how chemical reactions produce heat, light, gas, smoke, and sound. We know that if we mix two parts of hydrogen and one part of oxygen and provide enough activation energy, we can break their bonds. The atoms will then rearrange themselves to form new bonds and we get water. But along with water, it also gives us energy in the form of a bang. But for bangs created by fireworks, gunpowder was used. A good gunpowder is one which reacts in the fastest possible way. The earliest known formula for gunpowder is from a Chinese military manuscript, which says, a gunpowder made using 75% potassium nitrate, 15% charcoal, and 10% sulfur will react in the fastest possible way. If you make gunpowder manually using this formula, lay that gunpowder in a straight line and ignite one end, then it will take a couple of seconds to burn completely to the other end. This is because your handmade gunpowder will have particles which are very large on an atomic scale. This means that there's plenty of space between them. So size matters. The size of particles has something to do with reaction rate. Today, gunpowder is made using machines, which grind the particles really well. And there's something special about charcoal. This picture, taken using an electron microscope, shows a sponge-like structure of charcoal. So when the machine grinds these particles, it actually forces potassium nitrate and sulfur into these cavities. And that's one of the reasons why this gunpowder will burn faster than the handmade one. We know that at lower temperature, molecules move slowly. But as the temperature increases, molecules move faster and collide with each other. Now if we increase the density, you can see that there are more number of collisions. So we can safely say rate of reaction increases with increase in temperature and density. When gunpowder is burning, it releases energy or hot gases which are expanding against the atmosphere. As they expand, the temperature can fall, the density can fall, and so the reaction rate remains relatively slow. If we confine the gunpowder in a very tight container and burn it, the energy produced can't escape. The temperature cannot fall, the density cannot fall. This increases the rate of reaction, which produces more energy. But since the energy is trapped, rate of reaction increases even more, and so it goes. This is called thermal runaway. To produce better bangs, we would need to have a lot of gunpowder in very strong containers. Therefore, using gunpowder and confining it is not a very good option. So we use flash powder. Flash powder is commonly made using potassium perchlorate and aluminum powder. It burns quickly and, if confined, produces a loud noise. It's widely used in salutes, cherry bombs, M80s, and was once used for flashes in photography. Today, professional fireworks displays use something called aerial shells. You know what I'm talking about, the big ones in the sky. But how do they work? Here's a cross-section of an aerial shell. We ignite the fuse which burns the gunpowder. The gunpowder then acts as a lift charge and fires the shell into the air from the mortar. At the same time, it ignites the time fuse. After a predetermined number of seconds, the time fuse ignites the shell's burst powder, which in turn ignites the stars and throws them out far and wide, producing a beautiful firework display. To learn more about fireworks, check out Professor Bishop's lecture at the Royal Institution, where he talks about how a fuse can burn underwater, how we can make colored fireworks, and how modern fireworks work.